So I just want to show you a couple studies that show that uh, this DTP vaccine, or DTAP, either way, that this vaccine, they show studies that if the vaccine is withheld, that there's less asthma and less uh, atopy, as it's called. And uh, there's several of these studies, and I quickly show you, here's one from Hurwitz from 2000, and he, uh, he looked at um, thousands of, of people and did a statistical analysis, and he said, that if we held this vaccine for one year, we would find 50% fewer asthma, 45% fewer sinus, 54% fewer allergies, just by looking at who had the vaccine and who developed these cases. Uh, here we have another one from McDonald showing similar. They looked at 11,000 children, uh, looked at them at the age of seven, and saw who developed asthma. And they noticed that if the first dose of this vaccine was held, the rate of asthma was less than 50%. Uh, the second dose, less dramatic, but still uh, a decrease. And same with the third dose. So the question is, what if none of them were given at all? And the, what I observe is the unvaccinated children have far fewer allergies and asthma, far fewer requirements for antibiotics, and overall their immune systems are working properly, and uh, they tend to not develop these kinds of problems. There are known immunologic reasons why this happens, but I don't have time today to get into it. And then a lot of people say, well, Suzanne, you're talking about DTP, but today we use DTAP. But I can show you that actually this, this study here showed that there was 10% more atopy with DTAP than with DTP. So uh, there's uh, Definitely something to think about when it comes to these allergies and reactivity to, to normal things in the environment, possibly based upon abnormal programming of the immune system in very young children due to vaccination. <clears throat> uh, oh, skip that one. Uh, I'm going to skip through all this. There's a way that you can have too many vaccines. We know this. If you have have high antibody levels and then get a vaccine, your uh, likelihood of having reaction is much higher. And we know that as time has gone on, that this has become more and more of a problem. Uh, you can see here um, people before, born before 1968, 17.3%, sorry, after 1968, 17.3 are hyperimmunization in Italy. Before 1968, only 10% had hyperimmunization. And today, tetanus vaccines are offered for every wound. They're offered in USA for every pregnant woman. Even if she is pregnant every year or every two years, they still recommend to give her DTAP before the pertussis. So they're causing her to have hyperimmunization. Um, OK. Vaccine reactions. As of August 2012 in USA, this is our reporting system. <laughs> where somewhere between 1 and 10% of reactions is ever actually reported. Uh, any vaccine that had T in it, they looked at. 67 deaths and 22,000 adverse events. So the reaction, the, the reaction uh, to these vaccines is um, something to be considered and looked at. I talked about natural immunity. It does happen from eating the spores, which happen in the environment, uh, but you really only get protected uh, by the strain that you've eaten. So I want to talk about autoimmunity, not only because it's important in terms of tetanus vaccines, but it touches into, into autism. Because uh, I, it, it, when you look at the, what happens with autistic children, there's inflammation in the brain. And so we have to consider uh, the possibility of how vaccines could contribute and I'll get into that in a minute, but right now I just want to tell you how this happens and what evidence we have. Okay, we are made of protein. Our flesh is made of proteins and water, of course. Um, so bacteria and viruses are also made of protein pieces. So think about how come you're able to have bacteria on your skin and how come you're able to have uh, probiotics in your intestines, and they're actually good for you, and you don't get sick from them. 
What makes the difference between somebody who reacts to everything and somebody who can be perfectly colonized with bacteria and do fine with it? Well, the reason is because nature has devised us to really, in a sense, be one with the world in, in the microbial world. In your intestines are billions of bacteria and your bacteria outnumber you by 10 to one in your intestine. And the amount of viruses in your intestines outnumbers the amount of bacteria in your intestines. So how come you're not getting sick? It's because nature has devised a way for you to harmoniously live with these microbes because they're so similar to you. So if you don't react to yourself, you won't react to the microbes. If you don't react to the microbes, you don't react to yourself. So bacteria, there's an article that I advise you to read, it's free. And it's, there's a doctor in Italy named Dr. Daria Kanduk. And she's written much of this kind of research that's showing us today that when they look at the proteins in, in viruses, in bacteria, and even the proteins in a tetanus toxin or toxoid, that those proteins have so many similarities to our proteins that it's very difficult to make a vaccine that you will respond to. And for that reason, they add aluminum to it to make your immune system respond. Because normally, if I were to inject you with DTAP, without aluminum, or if I were to inject you with tetanus toxoid, you would not respond to it because your body already has been introduced to many of these proteins and you are programmed to not respond, okay? So this is important when it comes to autoimmunity. So something happens to break this uh, tolerance that we have to normal proteins and then we start to attack ourselves. Our immune system starts to attack ourselves. So, the reason for this tolerance, I'm sorry, this tolerance is why we can be loaded with all of these microbes and not react to them and not react to ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the problem, like I said, is that many of the vaccines, in fact, if you read this paper here, it would have to be all of the vaccines because this paper talks about that every bacteria has proteins that, that mimic the proteins in our body. He, every single one. She says, none of them is exempt, not even one. That's the title of the paper. Very important paper. So because of that, um, this ties into vaccination. I just talked about that, that the proteins in the vaccines are the same as proteins in us. And so, um, I mentioned that you wouldn't respond to them normally, and that's why um, the decision to put aluminum into vaccines was made back in the 1940s. And back then, there were just a few vaccines that had aluminum. But today, more than half of the pediatric vaccines contain aluminum, and we're giving them earlier and earlier, before babies even have their kidney function up to normal. We're giving them big doses of aluminum, which can get into the brain, uh, which can alter the immune system, which does epigenetically alter gene function, which changes how enzymes work. So we're giving these huge doses of aluminum to babies today with these vaccines to get the body to respond. And we're told, oh, don't worry, because the kidneys get rid of it. But if I had enough time today, I would show you how that's not true when it comes to babies and there's research to prove that. Uh, they also tell us that we shouldn't worry about aluminum because it's in the environment, it's all in the Earth's crust, because it's in breast milk, um, because it's found in our bodies, so it must be okay. Well, it's not okay, but the, the thing I want to point out to you is that there's a huge difference between eating aluminum and being injected into a muscle with aluminum. Even if you're injected intravenously with aluminum is better than being injected into a muscle with aluminum because the needle going into the muscle causes a reaction in that muscle that stimulates the immune system. It shows damage, uh, release of, of particles from inside cells, 
which stimulates the immune system, and then you add that aluminum, and you create a spark that creates a, a fire, and that fire may not be put out. And now we're creating it possibly against ourselves because of the similarity between the proteins in the vaccine and our own proteins. So this is something that's not just about tetanus vaccine. It's diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis vaccines. It's haemophilus influenza B vaccines, meningitis vaccines, pneumococcal vaccines, hepatitis A and B all contain high doses of aluminum. And I believe that this is an indefensible argument that um, there's, there's no way to argue that the doses of aluminum that are given to babies today uh, is not a major problem and that it needs to stop and we need to stop injecting babies with aluminum. How about the Gardasil? I don't know what that is. Gardasil. Oh, well, I'm talking babies now. Gardasil is for older girls. There's a large dose of aluminum and the way it's connected onto the protein is unique and even, in my opinion, and uh, according to some of the toxicology literature, even more problematic. <clears throat> okay. So these aluminum can go into other body parts. It can go into lymph nodes, brain. We know this, it's scientifically proven in peer-reviewed medical literature by scientists that study aluminum. Uh, it can react with our own proteins, our own enzymes. It alters gene function and it has many known harmful effects and I'd love to tell you all about it. Uh, but you can go and get this paper, which is about 17 pages long. It has over 200 medical references describing exactly why and how aluminum is a death element to cell function. Okay? Now, while it might not kill you, it is highly likely uh, in certain po po populations to make children and adults sick. Okay, so um, it forces the immune system to overreact so that you can be vaccinated uh, and hopefully immunized, and that's the philosophy. And we've already talked about attacking its own body parts, and here we have, I'm just gonna talk about these two because we know, uh, we know look, these papers are, will tell you that the tetanus toxin toxoid has similarities with these molecules in your body. This one here is, is what makes the outside of all of your cells. Every cell in your body is made of phosphatidylcholine. This one here is in your DNA, in the nucleus of your cell. This is the one when you have lupus, you make antibodies to this, systemic lupus erythematosus. So we have to consider that some of the autoimmunity that we're seeing in society today can be related to the practice of vaccination.